Doctors of Reddit, what's the biggest case of faking it you've ever seen? Taking trauma call during surgery residency, had a prisoner come in after a fight and claimed he couldn't move or feel his legs. All the CT scans and MRIs were normal, but we would shield his legs so he couldn't see them and poke them with needles and other sharp objects. With enough force to cause pain he never flinched or moved his legs at all. He was diagnosed with Sawara, spinal cord injury without radiographic abnormality. He stayed in the hospital for a week. No improvement. Always had one guard with him. One night they were down in the lobby watching some television but the guard needed to use the restroom. The patient said, where could I possibly go? I'm paralyzed guard left him alone for 2 minutes. Patient last seen sprinting down the road, naked butt cheeks flapping in the breeze. Made it to a city 4 hours away by car before he was caught again. I have never seen anyone fake it so well. Truly playing the long con. Had a patient come and for a fall who now couldn't move their legs at all. Did a bunch of tests, didn't find anything. The patient was not at all phased by suddenly being paralyzed which was the first red flag. Didn't really believe anything was wrong but the patient was still not moving their legs. My options are to admit for a huge workup or get them to walk. So I update them saying everything is fine. Tests are negative. You can go home. Patient gets up. Gets dressed and walks out without a word. We had a patient faking a seizure so my supervisor told one of us to get the brain needle. The patient made a miraculous and swift recovery without intervention. That's the best part about most of these stories. When they make up some form of fake machine so that the patient stops faking. Cracks me up every time. Dermatologist here. Patient was convinced she had a melanoma and needed a biopsy and would need to be on workers comp. I told her it looked like ink from a marker. She demanded a biopsy. I wiped the area off with an alcohol swab and showed her the ink and that there was no spot on her skin anymore. She stormed out threatening to sue. I'm just glad I cured her melanoma. Not a doctor but worked in healthcare for nearly 20 years. While taking a break from the IQ, due to it being emotionally draining, I worked in home health for a bit. I had a patient who clearly had Munchausen syndrome. On a daily basis she would call her insurance to see what things would be covered if she was diagnosed with this or that. She called her doctor's office an average of 5x during my shift with her. She would report all kinds of non-real symptoms. She pestered the doctors into do exploitive laparoscopic surgery. Of course nothing was found. One day I walked in and she was rubbing her incisions with rotten cabbage trying to get it infected. She wasn't seeking pain meds, except to sell. Really she was just as happy with antibiotics or stool softeners. Anything. As long as they wrote her a prescription and she got to go to the pharmacy where she did a whole song and dance for them too. Claiming allergies and reactions. She always increased the exaggeration of her story too. One time she fluttered her eyes, after making sure I was looking, and said she lost consciousness in that half a second. She called the doctor and claimed she lost consciousness for 5 minutes. She called the insurance and claimed it was 10 minutes. She called the pharmacy and claimed it was 30 minutes. Then she called 911 and told them she woke up on the floor after losing consciousness for 4 hours. The worst thing about her was she was a mom. Her son was 28 at the time and by all the stories of his childhood illnesses and all her saying how he is severely disabled I knew she basically fricked up his childhood with Munchausen by proxy. She portrayed him as being severely disabled and that's why he would never find a wife. I met him, he was healthy and of average intelligence. He wasn't looking for a wife. He was gay, but she refused to accept that. Working with her was so miserable that I took a couple years off from any and all healthcare after that. Young, 18-20, woman went running into small rural hospital a pretending to have abdominal pain. Police officer had tagged her going 40 plus km over the limit which was stunt driving as per the new law in Ontario. Impound and license suspension automatic. Cop followed her into her and apparently said he'd be waiting for her when she left. Locum staff such as myself were housed at a small B&B about 15 minutes away, and the year had pre-printed order sets to be done before we arrived. When I arrived she flat out admitted that she just came in because she freaked out and didn't stop. I told her we'd give her 45 minutes to call her parents family before I booted her. Except, BHCG came back positive, and subsequent ultrasound came back showing extremely early ectopic. Officer figures out something is up when he hears their ambulance call come and over radio. 
She was completely asymptomatic and just worked out that she dodged both charges and a life threatening issue by accident. It was definitely a WTF moment. Physical therapist here. Working mom comes into the clinic with her infant in a stroller. She's limping like she's got a nail in her foot. Wincing in pain and tears in her eyes. She's crying during her visit with the PT. None of us think she's faking it. She limped out of the clinic. I glanced out of the window and saw this woman bounding down the sidewalk. Hips swaying. Full stride. Going places. We were all fools. This patient comes in for back pain with weakness of the legs. Gets a full workup with MRI. Standard blood work. And then some immunological things to look for stuff like myasthenia gravis. No neurological or immunological explanation for the weakness. Patient is seen by physical therapy and they are of the opinion that the patient is holding back intentionally. Go to see the patient at the end of the day and prep them for discharge. Patient is infuriated that they're being discharged. Yelling and screaming about how they aren't better. How they're disappointed in the institution. Blah blah blah. They said one particular thing that still clearly stands out 3-4 years later. I can't believe you're sending me home already. I haven't even told my family I'm here. And now you're going to send me home before they even have the chance to see me. My attending and I leave the room to arrange things with the nurses. We go back in and the patient is out of bed and standing up in the middle of the room. Miraculously the patient is able to walk with zero assistance when they had so much difficulty with any assistance over the previous two days. At that point, they were in rage we went into the room without knocking. They were discharged home after a conversation regarding abuse of medical services. Sorter along the same idea. Working at a pharmacy we saw a guy come in to try and get a refill on some pain meds that had no refill. After pleading that his ear really hurt we told him again we couldn't refill it. One of the other employees saw his step into a side hallway and take a pencil and jam it forcefully into his ear repeatedly, drawing blood. He calmly left and went to the air. He came back a few hours later with a prescription for pain meds. My brother was an EMT for 2 years and he told me this. People will try to use the ambulance as a means for transportation from Fulton to Oswego, because the hospital is in Oswego, by faking seizures. Sometimes when the head EMT guy was feeling fun and knew that the person was faking, he'd say something like man it's weird that he's having seizures but not peeing himself. Apparently the person would kind of snap out of it for a second, weigh up the repercussions, then either pee themselves or stop faking. I thought that was hilarious. Had a patient when I was an intern feigning blindness. She would constantly be playing on her smartphone, only furiously trying to hide it when someone from the care team came into her room. The best was when my attending one day strolled past her room and threw his hand up in a highly exaggerated hula wave. She started to throw her arm up to but caught herself halfway through, then threw her hand back into her lap and pretended to be staring off into nothing. A patient claimed to have all kinds of illnesses and would cough every minute or so. Have you tried coughing when you don't need to? It's like a normal cough but you take the subwoofer away. Now imagine that, but 10 times more fake. I once saw a patient who had been faking paralysis of the legs for years, used a wheelchair, never walked, etc. Old records showed extensive imaging, neurology consults, and other tests that proved the patient had full function of all extremities. Family friends were just going along with it, not sure if it was really conversion disorder or if the patient had some secondary gain issue. That's so baffling. I'm a part-time wheelchair user and I don't know why anyone would choose to make the world more inaccessible to themselves. Not a doctor, but I'm a UK based midwife. Had a patient who had been in and out of hospital throughout her pregnancy with episodes of heavy bleeding. This was her sixth baby so she was a fairly well known patient in our unit. The issue was no one had ever seen her actively bleeding. She'd call saying that she had bled down the toilet but flushed it. And all the examinations we did came back completely normal with mostly no evidence of any bleed whatsoever. On occasions during speculum examinations we'd see the smallest amount of blood. I was caring for her during a shift where she yet again called to say she was bleeding, walked into her room and found her jabbing around her vag with a sharp object to make herself bleed. She had been doing it the entire pregnancy. The reason she gave, because she had 5 noisy children at home. Needed some rest and knew we wouldn't admit her to hospital if it wasn't for a good reason. 
she would do it any time her being discharged home was mentioned. We ended up having to complete a perinatal mental health referral and consult with the safeguarding midwives as she was putting herself and baby at risk of serious harm. Imagine being so exhausted with your family that you feel the need to stab yourself in the hoo-ha. Yikes. I hope that woman found the help she needed. Nurse for an ophthalmologist here. Had a 21 year old new patient claiming to be completely blind from a sudden and severe glaucoma diagnosis from a previous unknown doctor. Would feel around while walking. Tried to keep eyes rolled back into his head. The whole 9 yards. He said he is a famous YouTube rapper that is now unable to make videos or earn a living. I exclaimed to have heard of him before and very excitedly asked him to search and show me his YouTube channel on my phone so that I could subscribe. He took my phone out of my hand and effortlessly found the YouTube app and typed away in the search bar. Oh, and of course his eyes were back to normal and focused. I am amazed he didn't ask for a discount or to have a free checkup for some exposure. One time my roommate, who is an IQ nurse, came to see one of my indoor soccer games. During the game a player on the other team went down hurt and starting screaming in pain and swearing and rolling around while holding his ankle before he was eventually helped off the field. He then limped over to where the fans sat and watched the rest of the game brooding in silence before he left early. After the game my roommate told me he was going to go over and see if there was anything he could do to help until he saw that the guy was limping on the wrong leg. Ophthalmology technician. People pretend to be blind all the time. Go to check their eye pressure with the tonopin, a device you poke them directly into the eye with, and they go what the frick is that thing. Guy came to her I was a nurse at the time. For stomach ache when asking him about history he randomly mentions a fight with his girlfriend where she left in a tizzy and he fell asleep on the couch. 20 minutes later when we see the CT. He has a satellite cable remote wrapped in a condom lodged in his rectum. I suppose he intended to frame her. Didn't get to hear the conversation he had with the doctor. I was curious how he was going to explain why she was nice enough to wrap it in the condom. Obligatory not a doctor. I'm a nurse. We had a guy who had to come in every 3 months to get a medical certificate to say he couldn't work at his retail job due to severe disabling back pain. He was receiving large amounts of insurance money for this condition. After the doctor had done his usual examination and questions and signed it off the guy asks the doctor to check his shoulder which doctors and asks how he injured it. Guy says playing rugby for a competitive team. Really says doc. How long have you been playing for them? Guy has been playing and training the whole time. Doc puts this info on insurance form. Doc loses his crap in staff room laughing. Next week the patient loses his crap in reception because his insurance has been cancelled. Haha. <laughs> I used to know a guy who badly injured his back at work and got lifetime compensation. It really freed up a lot of time for him to train for cross country ski races. I am a nurse but not a doctor. I had a patient who worked in a hospital. Janitor. So he knew enough to fake a bit. He was seeking pain meds. Complaining of chest pain. Wanting morphine. He was worked up for everything cardiac and was fine. Then he tried to claim GI discomfort when he was being discharged. Cleared again for everything. Faked chest pain again. Cleared again. Now he's my patient. I'm a new face. He's telling me he's having abdominal pain. I call the doctor, knowing this guy's history. He says he'll be up to see him soon. This patient wants a ginger ale. Some stomach ache. I decide to go to lunch. My co-worker comes into the lunchroom, disgusted. This guy had taken a dump in a basin and then dumped the ginger ale over it and tried to tell her he'd had fecal vomiting. He obviously needed Dilaudid right now for the pain. I walked into his room and sure enough, a pile of crap and a puddle of ginger ale. I told him I'd have to take away his food and drinks and we'd have to put an NG down. Suddenly he changed his tune. He admitted to faking it. Why do these people do what they do? In the story, opioids. Till about fecal vomiting. A nurse. Bringing a patient back to a room who said he had kidney stones. I had him stop at the bathroom and get a urine sample. Dude comes out with with the specimen cup that literally has a piece of concrete in it. Looked him in the eye expecting some sort of joke. He was serious. I threw it away and walked his dumb butt back to the waiting room to contemplate his stupidity. 
Years ago I had a patient who had been rear-ended in an auto accident a few weeks before I saw her. She had a history of lupus. She was decked out in the usual I'm crippled paraphernalia. Crutches, neck brace, elbow braces, wrist braces, knee braces, and could barely walk. I saw her a couple of times and she showed no improvement. One Saturday I was on call but had to take a back streets route to the hospital because of an event taking place on the main thoroughfare. I apparently drove through her neighborhood, because, wonders behold, there she was wearing old lady spandex power walking down the sidewalk, holding weights in both hands. I did not call out to her. Next week, she was back in clinic, with her I'm crippled get up on again. Hum. A few weeks later I got the subpoena for the deposition, and it all became clear. Not a doctor but I was in the O one night and there was a seeking drug addict who literally only acted in pain when there was staff around. You ever see those videos where the little kid is fine and then they spot a parent and then ball then immediately stop and be fine when the parent is out of view? Exactly like that. Sat fine. No movements or wincing or noises then wailing when a nurse was in the same vicinity. Then back to fine when they left. A few weeks ago, I had a vulva barsi. I was petrified of this procedure, and I didn't know how to ask the doctor if I'll be given pain meds, because of people like this. There is no way to even frame the question without sounding like a drug seeker. I ended up not needing anything at all, but still. Figure it's a legit question, but you can't ask it. Not a doctor but nurse. I once read a specialist consultation report and at the end of the report the actual diagnosis given was fictitious ailment. Fourth year medical student. On my rotation and a trauma came in from a woman that had been arrested. During the drive the patient banged her head four times against the window of the police car and then went unresponsive. She came to us with a bruise over her forehead and unresponsive. We all smelled BS but the patient was a great actor, didn't even flinch during the digital rectal exam, which is standard for all patients that come in through the trauma bay, though some of the nurses said that they caught her peeking at us when we'd leave the room. We ended up getting a CT scan, which was normal, and was even considering intubating her to secure her airway when our attending finally walked over to her, opened her eyelids and held them open while telling her to wake up. Finally she started fighting to close her eyes and the jig was up. The doctor called her out and she proceeded to start screaming at us. She was much more pleasant when she was pretending to have a brain injury. My cousin got glasses. Her 7 year old little sister also wanted glasses because she thought it was so cool to wear them. So she started telling her teachers she couldn't read what was on the chalkboard. And she'd squint at home and go incredibly close to the TV to watch things because she said she couldn't see things clearly. Her parents got worried and took her to the doctor. She read everything wrong on the vision test. Everyone seemed convinced that she needed glasses. But the doctor was a little concerned because the tests indicated she needed really thick glasses. And usually that wasn't the case unless there was a family history of vision issues. Her parents both had 20 stroke 20 vision and her sister only had astigmatism. They all realized she was faking it. So the doctor told her parents in front of her that she'd need some pretty intense eye surgery so she'd be able to see without glasses. They even wheeled in a machine to make it convincing to say they could do the surgery right then and there. She freaked out, confessed to faking it all and started to cry. She got grounded for a while. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.